you should be using more transform nodes in Fusion. Why? Well, why don't I show you? Here I have a nice little thing going on. I have a Game Boy all cut out, isn't that nice? And uh, we have our media out and oh no, when I merge this over the background, it's too big. So what do we generally do? Sometimes we grab this merge node and inside of the merge node, there are all kinds of controls that affect what the foreground does. So if we take this size down, we can size this down and move it around and all that kind of stuff, which is really cool. And so problem solved, right? Well, yes. And if you're doing something really simple and you remember that you did it this way, it's okay, I guess. But what if you want to, I don't know, make a copy of this thing? I can make another merge node like this and take my media in and plug it into my merge. And now that transform is gone. So now I have to do something like copy this merge and paste it and can just get rid of this merge and hold shift and drag this in and then put the media in there and then then I can kind of change things on the merge and, and that works but here's the big big problem again this isn't much of an issue if you're just doing a couple things like this but once you get with just a few more nodes if you look at this node graph what can you assume is going on we have a background and we're merging a picture over it and there's a mask cutting out that picture and we're also merging the picture over itself again and then we're putting that into our media out and there's not really any indication that we're changing it just by looking at this node graph one of the main advantages of working with nodes is the nodes are kind of like a map of all the things that you did to make this comp so you should be able to if you have a map be able to figure out what's happening and where you are What's happening here is there's some stuff hidden. By looking at this, we would have no idea that we're scaling and sizing and adjusting the position of this Game Boy because we'd have to go into the merge and look at the inspector and look at our on-screen controls and everything to actually figure that out. And as your composition gets more and more complicated, this gets more and more inconvenient because you have more and more stuff that is hidden behind the scenes which is the exact reason why it's a nightmare to get somebody's Photoshop file that has all these hidden effects and everything or to dissect somebody else's composition in like a layer-based compositing program. You have all this hidden stuff and you don't know what the heck is going on. But with nodes, we can kind of spell this all out so that we understand what's happening just by looking at the node graph, okay? So what I like to do is anytime I have a merge, I just let that be a vanilla merge. All that merge does is put stuff over other things and maybe I'll change the blend or the apply mode, but that's pretty much it. I'll take this other merge out for a minute. If I want this to be, you know, half opacity, that's something I do in the merge. If I want this to be a certain transparency mode like luminosity or whatever, that's something only the merge can do, okay? So I know where to look for that. But if I'm gonna scale something or move it around or anything like that, I like to use a transform node. So here, right under our transport controls, we have our transform node. I'll grab that and run this media in through our transform before it hits the merge. So now we can do the same kind of thing. We can size this and move it over and all of that kind of stuff. It's sort of documented here in our flow. We're applying a mask to our media in, then we're transforming that media in somehow, and then we're putting it over our composition. This also lets us quickly see what this looks like without the transform on it, just by turning the transform off and on. So it's kind of more modular. Also, I could take the output of this transform and merge it over this merge one like that. And guess what? We have a copy that's already transformed and we don't have to copy and paste merges and that kind of thing. So it's just a much better way to work because it's more flexible. We can decide to grab the transformed image or the non-transformed image. We can preview this in different states in the comp just by hitting two on the keyboard to bring any of these nodes into the viewer. And what we're doing isn't hidden in the settings of the merge. If you're like me, sometimes you'll put something in a merge and you go, Ugh, I don't wanna add a transform node and take all that time to add a new node and then adjust the things and everything. I'll just quickly mess with it in the merge. Dude, Just it takes two seconds. Look at, look at this, boom. Already in the merge, I can size it down. It takes literally like one second to add this and it's gonna make your life a whole lot easier. You use a transform node, you use it often. There's just no reason not to. Hey, if you wanna learn some more tips on working with Fusion, I have the Fusion Survival Guide. It is a free video course. It's available now in the description below. Go get that. That's your job. That and use more transform nodes. And if you don't, I'll smash you. A thousand points if you know what that's from.